Last week, we worked on a problem which is where we had four rows stacked one below the other that were supposed to be transformed into columns. Take a look. We have name of the person, the city, the age, and the phone number, and that uh, pair of four rows need to be transformed into four different columns, name, city, age, and the phone number. Now, that's easy because we know that we are going to bucket the number of rows into pairs of four. So first four rows, then the next four rows, and then the next four rows. But what if the number of rows are inconsistent? Let's say something like this. So here we have obviously four rows. There is a blank row in between, and then we have two rows. So name of the person and the city of the person, and that's it. This record ends. And then we have again a blank row in between, and then we this time we have four rows again. So we have the name, city, age, and the phone number. The next time we have three rows, so we have the name, the city, and the age. And we are not really sure that how many rows are we going to get. The only identifier that we have is a blank row in between where the record end and we move to the next record to be transformed into columns. How do we deal with that? Now, in this video, I created an approach to handle this, which is a mix of user interface and the M coding technique. And I also made sure that we work with a relatively larger data set. So this data that I'm working with is about, I think 500,000 rows of data, half a million records. And we will work with this data to see how do we use M code and a bit of user interface to transform this into columns. All right, no further ado, let's get started. All right, people, I have loaded the data in Power Query. I have also done a few user interface, simple steps in Power Query. Hopefully you should be able to understand these steps just by looking at them. Wherever there is an M code, I will help you with that. Let's start. So uh, the source step just loads the data from the current Excel workbook. This is about 500,000 rows of data. I also can see the null values right here. This indicates that this is actually the first row of the data. The second null, anything above that is the second row of the data, the third row of the data, so on and so forth. All right. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add an index column. So that comes in right here. If you don't know how to add the index column, that's right here up in the add columns tab, index column, and you can just add a sequence or a serial number. Once you have added the index column, the next thing that I do is write a very simple if condition. And the if condition checks that, hey, where is the next record going to come? That means it's just checking for nulls. That if you have a null in the data column, then show me the very index, which is number four. But if you don't have it, just supply a null. So again, if you have a null, then show me the number seven, which is nothing but the index. Otherwise, it's a null. And you can just take a look at this simple conditional column, which is right here, add columns tab and the conditional column. That's how I uh, open this up. And if the data column equals to a null, then index otherwise a null. Nothing that complicated, very, very simple. Now, once I have got the bunch of nulls and values in there, I'm just going to fill this up. So all of this becomes four, all of this becomes seven, so on and so forth. So fill up rather than fill down. Click on that and that has been filled up. Now, at the moment, I'm done with my uh, null, which is my identifier that when the next record breaks, and I'm going to get rid of the null from the data column. So that is nothing but my filtered rows. Now, by just looking at the data, I understand that this is the first row of the data, the second row of the data with just two columns, the third row, and the fourth row, so on and so forth. Now, at the moment, it's very enticing to believe that I'm going to pivot the data and convert that into rows and columns. But that's a very, very costly operation in case you're working with a very large data. And I would not recommend you to do that. Now, instead of applying a pivot, we'll write some M code to be able to get the effect of pivot without actually pivoting the data. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a grouping. So I'm going to go to the transform tab and click on group by all of these four needs to be grouped together. The seven needs to be grouped together, so on and so forth. So I'm going to come to the transform tab, click on group by. I'm going to go on the advanced tab. I want to group it by the custom column, which is this particular column. And I'm going to call this as data. Uh, the operation is going to be all the rows of the data. Click on OK. And that is where the grouping has been done. Once the data has been grouped, you can take a look at all the rows that belong to the value four are captured within this table. And that's where I can see the entire data right here. Now, I don't need the index column, nor do I need the custom column. I just need the data column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this particular table into a list. How do I do that? Ridiculously simple. I'm just going to go ahead and modify this particular M code. So right now, these, this underscore right here is generating a table. From that table, I want the column called data, and that's all that I'm going to do. So I'm just going to maybe write a square bracket and data within that. I'm just going to get rid of everything which is after that. Close the curly braces and close the other one and I'm going to close the bracket as well. And once I commit to the formula, you can see that I have got a list and the list contains only the four values, 
right here now at the moment the values are one below the other and that's not however i want it so i want the first one to be the name and then the second one to be the city the third one to be the age and the fourth one to be the phone number and i want four different columns for that how do i do that so from this list which has got four different values i'm going to convert this list into a table so that you know i can separate out each and every value of the list into a table to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click on the data column and click on drill down so that this entire columns becomes a list now once you have got the list of a list structure, a larger list, and within that you have sub list, every single list needs to be converted into a table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a simple function called list.transform. In the list.transform function, I'm going to say that, hey, every single sub list right here needs to be converted into a table. So I'm going to say each uh, table dot from rows, and I'm just going to maybe mention the underscore right here. Now, at the moment, every single item of this list, which is right here, also needs to be a list. That means Cecilia, the name itself also needs to be in the list format. And therefore, this function is not going to work. So to be able to do that, what I need to do is I need to convert this every single list item also into a list by surrounding that in the curly braces. And now if I kind of commit to this, you can see that uh, the error kind of goes away and all of this list item contains a table. All right, if you preview the table, you're gonna see that we now have four different columns right here. So that's uh, Cecilia, New York, uh, ages 42, and the column is this. And if you take a look at any other table which did not have the four columns, maybe the fourth record here, you're gonna see that we now have maybe about three columns here. All right, that's it. So Peter, Delhi, and the age, these are just three records. And at the moment, all that I can do is just take all of these tables, combine them together. And the easiest way to do that is that you have a list. Within the list, you have the tables that you would want to combine. There's nothing much to do. All that I'm going to do is write something like table.combine. And I'm going to maybe surround this list function within that, which is giving me multiple tables. Close the bracket, press enter. And what you have just received is a fantastic table all the rows combined and by the way they are pivoted and at this point in time in case you want to rename your columns manually sure enough you can double click on the headers and give the columns a rename but in case you're interested to take the approach a bit further and also automate the renaming of the columns automatically then we need to provide the renames within the excel file take that to power query and apply the renames right here let's take a look how do we do that as well so here in my excel i have created this small table at least i know the fact that there can be maximum of five columns in the data so the first column is uh, name the second column is city the third column is age phone number and the fifth column could be color right which is the extra column that we just added now i will take this uh, small table into power query so data tab uh, from table range all right once the data has been loaded into power query let's just start to do some manual work of renaming onto our data and then try to transform this data a bit so that we can automate our renaming so i'm going to go back to my query right here which is uneven rows all right for the moment let's just try to rename the first column right here so if i just maybe double click on the column one and i'm going to say hey the name is name i press enter and let's just also do it for column number two the name is city let me just press enter now, if you take a look at the function that is generating is table.rename columns, that's also the function that I'm going to use. It asks you for the name of the table, which is nothing but the previous step right here, which is data. And you can see that it gives you pairs of the name of the column that you're renaming and the rename of the column. So column one is the column that was right here and name is nothing but the rename. Column two was right here and city is nothing but the rename. The interesting thing to take a look at is that all of this, this is one list this is another list because you have curly brackets at the start and at the start this is also a list so all of these names are packed within a list of a list structure and we also need to create something like that so i'm going to go back to my query right here which is the renames query and i want this query to be transformed from a table into a list of a list structure right so how do we do that it's ridiculously simple i'm just going to make a new step and use the function something like table dot two rows and I'm gonna say, hey, uh, here is a table, and please convert every single row item into a list. So this becomes a list, and then this becomes a list, and then this becomes a list, so on and so forth. And every list is going to have two items, which is nothing but the name and the rename, name and the rename, that's exactly what we wanted. All right, let's just call this as renames, we are good to go. Now we are going to go back to our query, and instead of manually hard coding the names right here, I'm gonna maybe reference the renames right here, close the bracket and press enter. And you can see that all the columns are now going to be renamed. So this becomes name, city, 
then comes the age, then comes the phone number, and then comes the color. And that's all about it. You load the data into Excel. It might just take a few seconds, but I have tested this out with 500,000 rows of data, and it was able to load this data under a minute. All right, that's been it. Let me know if you have any questions on this one. I'm gonna be glad to reply to your questions in the comments. In case you are a beginner and you would wanna start your journey with Power BI, learn Power Query really well, DAX and data modeling really well, build good models, and even try to solve your own problems in an efficient way, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking all around till the end of this video. I hope you like it, and I will see you again in the next one. Cheers and bye now.